Becoming a game developer can be hard. And I can talk from experience because I am a game developer. But one of the reasons I think it is so hard is because there is no clear path to become a game developer. So that's why I wanted to create this video to yeah, introduce you to six projects for you to get you started and then create all the wild ideas you have in mind. Because one of the big problems I see is that many aspiring game developers and or beginner game developers immediately want to create all the big ideas they have in mind or want to replicate the big games they, they like to play or they are inspired by. But always getting overwhelmed by how much work has to go into it to create these games and skipping the fundamentals and eventually even end up quitting. Which I think is just a shame because game development is a lot of fun and really can become your greatest passion if you know where to start. This is why the first game I would really like to recommend to you is to create a guess the number game. A guess the number game is just a basic game where you have to guess a number and the system will tell you to go higher or to go lower all the way until you found the number. It's very easy and the game will also just hold up your score by how many tries you have and you can just try to beat your own high score. Very simple, but it's very great to get you to the fundamentals of programming and that's also why I think you should start this by using Java instead of going immediately into any gaming engines. By using Java and solely using Java with no libraries at all, you will get more into the core of programming and more again into the fundamentals, which will be a great asset in the long run when, when we will eventually start to create games in game engines. That's also why in the beginning, these first three games I will now recommend will be all without any gaming engines and my personal recommendation will be Java, but it's all up to you. If you prefer any other language like C Sharp or C++ just because you're interested in it, you have to feel free because that's how this game is. Like becoming a game developer is all out of your own interest and because that's the best way you can learn. To create your first guess the number game, I would really recommend you the video from Coding with John. He created a great video or a great tutorial in Java by creating a guess the number game. So I think that's a great way to get you started. As a second game, I think you can start with a more visual game, but still fairly basic, which is a tic-tac-toe game. A tic-tac-toe game might seem very simple, but it's actually more advanced than you might think. It has mainly to do with the algorithm you have to create to find the pattern for the match three, or even if you want to expand a match four and so on. I personally already created a, a series with this by creating tic-tac-toe entirely from scratch using Java. I would like to recommend you this, but I will also recommend you the one from freecodingcamp.org who created a great tutorial in JavaScript. Although I think they used a bit too basic for the algorithm to find the pattern. Uh, I tried to create it a bit more advanced by having uh, an algorithm which applies for multiple sizes of boards. Uh, but that's also why I would recommend you to actually try out both, maybe mine and theirs, just to see some comparisons within code and try to adapt that to your studying. The third game I would like to recommend you, and this will be the last one we will create without an engine, will be an Asteroids game. Asteroids is a fun game created by Atari, created in the late 1970s, I think 1979. And it's just a game where you are like a little spaceship where you have to defend yourself by shooting asteroids. Uh, this is to this day it's still a game which is used a lot by uh, introducing uh, aspiring game developers to uh, game development. Uh, Unity also has a great tutorial about this. But I would still recommend you to create this without an engine because it has a lot of animations and movement which you, if you create them on yourself or like, or I mean if you create them by yourself, you will learn a lot about it and will give you a big step ahead if you eventually gonna start using Unity because you will learn some more about using vectors and uh, you will have some with the shooting and maybe you will try and experiment with some values there as well and, and play a bit with the mathematics, which will make Unity, for example, and any, any other engine, it will make it much more sense because they mostly do uh, a big chunk of this stuff for you. But now you have a little bit of insight of what is going behind those engines. To create an Asteroids game, I think uh, Lee Stemkonski, if I said it out right, who has created a two episode series tutorials about creating an Asteroids game in Java. And I think his episodes are a great uh, foundation for you to get started and experiment with it. Uh, because you will just create a fairly, a fairly basic uh, Asteroid game, just like the one of Atari. But there's also a lot of room to add new things and for example create new bullets or add new enemies who shoot back at you. All, all those stuff, I think it's a lot of fun to experiment with and also a real challenge for you to 
trying to get a hold of it by developing things on your own. The fourth game I would recommend to you is to create a platformer game. Uh, for this you can use Unity 3D Engine or even yeah, Unreal Engine or Godot. It's all on your own preference again. But I think creating a platformer is a great way to get yourself started with any game engine. Uh, a platformer can just be like a Mario game where you just have to walk around and jump on some platforms and maybe get some power-ups. Uh, I also would recommend you to really try to play around with 2D and 3D. For a 2D, I would recommend you for Unity to start with to start with videos from Brackies to get yourself started with Unity 3D Engine in 2D and just play around with some of the built-in physics and try to get some power-ups to, for example, speed up or to jump your boost or, or maybe even add some jump pads. For the 3D platformer, I would just recommend you to create like a, a ball, a rolling ball, rolling around platforms. Again, also jumping, add some power-ups, just a bit like the 2D platform, but then in 3D with a ball. I think that will be a great way to get yourself started with engines in 3D and 2D. The fifth game I would recommend to you is to create an endless runner game. I think an endless runner game is perfect to get yourself started with creating, a, for example, a mobile game. Uh, an endless runner is just like, for example, Flappy Bird or uh, Crossy Road, but also games like uh, Jetpack Joyride. The goal of these games is just to go endlessly and go as far as you can to get a high score. And in the meanwhile, get some currency, coins, to get some upgrades or add some new skins to your character. From this point, I would not recommend you to watch any videos. I think if you started with some basics and some fundamentals and later on uh, learning to use an engine, uh, doesn't matter which of Unity, Godot or Unreal Engine. From this point, I think it's very important to start learning to learn or also just to learn and search on Google. It's very important because at this point, it's uh, fairly easy if you already created a platformer to create an endless runner. But you just need to try and formulate your questions on the on the issues you bump into and just put them on Google and try your first few searches and try to get to your answer there. This is very valuable if you're becoming a game developer in the end and is very much needed to create stuff on your own because we cannot know it all, but everything is on the internet. So from this point, creating an endless runner, you should really start focusing on learning to learn and add as much features you, as you can just by trying to study some other games or some other videos, maybe just getting some parts of it and just browsing the forums to, or ask your questions in groups or Discord groups. Then we are finally at our last game, which will be Pac-Man. I think Pac-Man is a great game, uh, even though it's so old. Even though it is so old, it has some, it has some fairly advanced AI, which you, which you will might underestimate. But again, at this point, the learning to learn is coming in really handy and it's, and it's going to be a lot of fun and satisfying if you're eventually going to end up making the AI for the ghosts. It's because each ghost has their own tactic to chase the player. And I think it's a lot of fun to try and figure out what each tactic is from each ghost and try to find your way in implementing this. There is no wrong way of implementing it. You, it's just all on your own face and just try to figure it out without watching any tutorials. So these are my six games I would I wanted to introduce to you to get you started. Don't get me wrong, it's just to get you started. And if you're having troubles with any of them, for example, if you have troubles with the guess the number, if you have troubles understanding that or or, or, or like in between with the tic-tac-toe, you can also try, try to create games like Hangman or uh, the current famous Wordle game where you have to guess a word just to get a mid, bit more hold onto these fundamentals. Also, you can just try to search up for some more fundamental courses or tutorials. There are great free uh, courses and tutorials online for you to follow, uh, just to get yourself a bit more confident with it. Um, but also, if you have some troubles with Asteroids or maybe like with the uh, Endless Runner and uh, platforming games, I would also recommend you to just focus on uh, replicating some more hyper casual games. Some hyper casual games you can think of are like uh, Brick Breakers or even Snake or also a game like Doodle Jump. Just of some of the old games or maybe some of the new games you like which are just quick and easy to play and thereby named uh, hyper casual. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please consider giving me a like and subscribe and you can put up the bell notification to get notified. Also, always feel free to ask me any questions uh, in the comments below or send me a direct message on Instagram. I will always be there to try to help you if I can. And, other, and otherwise, I hope some other people will also be able to help you within the comments. I wish you the best with uh, getting yourself started as a game developer. And maybe I see you later in the field as well. But for now, I really hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.